Here is the one and only who. He said to me, Soph, how come you never tell me when you're having an orgasm? I said to him, Ernie, you're never around. I'll never forget it, you know. I was having tea one time with my girlfriend, Clementine. The doorbell rang. There was a delivery boy there with two dozen roses. I opened the card. It said, love from your boyfriend, Ernie. I said to Clementine, Clementine, do you know what this means? For the next two weeks, I'm going to be flat on my back with my legs wide open. Clementine said to me, what's the matter with you? Ain't you got a vibe? I'll never forget it, you know. The longest time, I didn't wear no underwear. Used to drive my boyfriend Ernie absolutely batty. One time I caught a terrible cold. Ernie said to me, Soph, you've got a terrible cold. You've got to go see the doctor right away. I said, all right, Ernie, make an appointment for me. So he rang up the doctor, and this is what he said, unbeknownst to me. Doc, I'm sending Soph over. She's got a terrible cold, but that's not the problem. The problem is, she don't wear no underwear. Do me a favor. Tell her the reason she got this cold is on account of she don't wear no underwear. You got that? Right, oh, says the doc. So I, like a schmuck, trot on down to the doctor's office. Doctor says, open your mouth and say, ah. I opened my mouth. I said, ah. You can stop clapping. Doc looked down my throat. He said, Soph, you ain't wearing no underwear. I said, I beg your pardon? He said to me, Soph, you ain't wearing no underwear. I said to him, Doctor, you can look down my throat and see I ain't wearing no underwear. He said, that's right, Soph. I said, Doc, do me a favor. Look up my ass and tell you my hat's on straight. <laughs> A neighborhood under siege. They know you. What does that mean? Woof, woof, uh, woof, oh woof. gosh, it's 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 a symbol of approval. I know, but is it woof or is it woof? It's uh, it's woof. It's woof. Oh, woof. Yeah. I see. I see. <laughs> you have a lot of real professionals out there. Yes. Really good. You know, we made that movie for the boys and we worked in front of live audiences and we had a lot of people who were reservists. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were supposed to be in the 40s and the 50s and they would stand up and they'd go, woof, 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 woof. <laughs> and it was, it was a nightmare to get, you couldn't get them to stop, you know? I couldn't, didn't believe how much, woo, you've really gotten out into the main mainstream. It was very exciting. Well, yeah, but, but it means they love you. <laughs> um, first of all, December 1st was your birthday. Yes. What did you get for your birthday? What did I get for my birthday? I passed 
just another year. It was like passing a stone. It was vile. Uh, um, what did I get for my birthday? I got mostly books, actually. But it was a very nice birthday party. Some friends of mine threw me a birthday party, and we sang songs from our hippie youth. It was, uh, it was Did you exciting. sing that one? No. <laughs> no, we didn't sing that one. We sang uh, Let the Sunshine In and uh, Aquarius and uh, Mellow Yellow. And so, Aquarius? And songs from our hippie youth. Yeah, I said songs. It's very exciting, that last chorus, when they and when everyone raises their voice and sings, Let the Sunshine. Oh, I tell you, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. <laughs> Have your neighbors forgave you? Because I heard the party was wild. Well, it was pretty wild. We had, we had mostly singers, because we're all singers. All my friends are singers. Yeah. And we sing at the top of our lungs. We always sing, like, really corny. Corn, corny, corny songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, some guy came and knocked on the door and said to turn the music down. He couldn't conceive of people actually singing out loud. You know, he thought it was a, it was a record or something. Or the radio, worse. Um, I was telling him, you know, about the movie a little bit. It's gotten good reviews. Very good reviews. Uh, congratulations on that. It's a great movie. And, and speaking of songs, there's a song, Billy... Uh, 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 uh. Why do you always do that? Well, this your movie. That's true. It's my movie. The song is Billy a Dick. Okay. <laughs> He's trying to get me to go down this path that I don't really want to go down. I'm so just you wondering... will excuse me if I slap him. <laughs> Silly. I was wondering where that song came from. Um, it, it's a Hoagie Carmichael song that was never recorded. Mm -hmm. And I, I needed this, I had this spot and I couldn't fill it. I looked, in, I looked in every catalog, I listened to all kinds of music. And I finally met, uh, at a benefit, I met Michael Feinstein, who is a, he knows everything. He knows every song ever written. And I told him that I needed this song that had, I needed a song that wasn't familiar from the 40s. You know, I didn't want to do, you know, Billy, uh, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. I wanted to do something that people had never heard. He said, I know just the song. And this song was a song. I have a little cassette of Hoagie Carmichael in his, in his garage or something. A little tape recording that he made singing this song and accompanying him. It's quite, quite wonderful. Yeah. And it's a good song in the picture. All the songs in the picture are wonderful. And I'm brilliant. <laughs> come out and say, you know, my picture, my picture, my picture. You know, you go home and you just go, oh, God, another day of my picture, my picture. I don't know how I'll survive, but I do. I've been doing it for about two weeks and I'm fed up. No, no, no. <laughs> you worked hard to get this one done. Oh, I worked like a dog. Why was it important to you? Why was this movie important Well, I love the music and I love the idea that you were going to see a, a, a woman's point of view of war. You know, war movies are some of the most exciting movies ever made, but the guys always get into the action and the women never do, with the exception of maybe M.A.S.H., uh, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to do something really exciting. I wanted to do, I, you know, I made this picture, The Rose, t 10 years ago, <laughs> and I loved her. Picture. I made this picture. I didn't make it. Mark Rydell made it. I loved this picture so much. I loved that character because she was really violent and she had really strong feelings. And I, she died at the end of the picture, so I couldn't take her to Vietnam. That was what I wanted. Rose goes to Vietnam. You know, can you imagine with a, you know, sort of Rambo-esque kind yeah. of thing, Rambet. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I didn't get to do, and I started thinking about it around that time, putting some kind of some kind of entertainer in the front of a war, and that's what came out after a lot, many many years of working on it. Yeah, we have a little clip that we should look at. Uh, what's in this clip? Do you know? This, it, of course, I know my clips. What do you think I am? Some guests I'm a don't producer. know. <laughs> they don't know. I swear. <laughs> oh my God. Well, hard to believe. Um, <laughs> This clip is, uh, she, the, the character, the character goes on a long journey, and Jimmy Kahn goes on this journey with me. He plays Eddie Sparks, and I play Dixie Leonard, and it's, you see us age from the 40s all the way to the 90s. And in this clip, he has dragged me to the war, to the Vietnam War, in order for me to see my son. He really wants to see, he, he loves my son, and he wants to see my son, too. And he's kind of blackmailed me into going so that he can have a, a so that he can have uh, a, 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 sh a show, a television show of it. And uh, when he gets to Vietnam, he, d he discovers that things are not what he expected them to be. And that's okay. what this is about. Sandy, kick this clip. The places I remember All my love Though some have changed I got a special treat for you guys. Let me bring her out, the wonderful Miss Dixie Leonard. Guys, 
are the sorriest bunch of grunts I ever saw in my life. Where the hell did you learn your manners? Don't you know you're supposed to say excuse me before you attack a lady? I would, Sonny, but you'd probably have a heart attack. Lots of margarines say they have a buttery taste, even when there's no... Um. Let's see. <laughs> Kathy Bates was here um, a couple days ago, and she was talking about uh, misery. I didn't know you were offered that role. I was. I was offered that. Yeah, I was. But I, I, I think she did a brilliant job. I, I, I would have done something probably. Uh, she's brilliant. You know, I've, I followed her for, you know, I don't know if you remember this picture called Straight Time. She did it with Dustin Hoffman many, many years ago. It was one of the first pictures she ever did, even though she's a big, big actress in, in the theater in New York. And I saw her in that, and she was so real that I couldn't, I had never really seen acting like that. She really impressed me and I started to follow her career. And so I know her, her work pretty well and I thought she did a fabulous job. I was afraid, I was too afraid. I thought, what will the fans say? You know, when she cuts off the feet and everything, I was totally appalled, you know. And it's James oh Caan too, you would have gotten It was James Caan, <laughs> my God. I, th I th think people would like me to see, see me cut off somebody's <laughs> but not necessarily cut off somebody's <laughs> gigs I usually get, you know, get out the scissors, come over here, hon. And so, uh, but it was, it was a hit, and, and I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud she got that little statuette. I'm really proud. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of film choices, I've read... I've made some debt, haven't I, Well, babe? no, I, we want to talk about the positive. Let's talk oh, about good, the oh, positive. Oh, good, oh, good, oh, good, oh, good. The future. You've said you'd like to work with Pee Wee Herman and sure, Prince. Sure, sure. Let's talk about Pee Wee first. What would you like to do with Pee Wee? <laughs> Comedy, I think, with Pee Wee. Don't you think that would be funny? He could play sort of like someone who doesn't really want to have sex, and I would be be someone who uh, who sort of is like really into it, but not with him. You know, like like Mae West and W. C. Fields were. Do you remember in My Little Chickadee? He yeah. was always after her, and she was always going out of my way, out of my way. And uh, I never forgot the the pairing of those two. I always loved them. And he's perfect for that. He has that aura that everybody. Well, it certainly has been an interesting year for him. My God. <laughs> it's been an interesting year for all of us. Yeah, but you're a supporter of Pee Wee, though. I absolutely am a supporter of Pee Wee. Absolutely. He's a friend of mine. I've known him for a long time. He's got a, 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 a heart of gold. Really wonderful guy. That's good. And Prince? I can't say the same for Prince. <laughs> oh, you, you no, know actually, him, I, do, I do know him a little bit. I do actually. He probably does have a heart of gold. I don't know him that well. He doesn't talk much, you know. Have you ever had him on, his, on your show? He doesn't talk he much. He doesn't talk much. <laughs> He's kind of like, you know monosyllabic, you know, like, oh, yes, no, yes, no, and in a very soft tone. But he's a fabulous musician. Great, great. One of the best. One of the best in the world. I think he's a genius. I you think, he's, do something I think he's a genius. I love to work with him. You know, once I read in the Rolling Stone that he said he, he had, you know, respect for me. Respect for me? You know, I was, I, I couldn't believe it. He put me, I was in the same sentence as Joni Mitchell, and that's like, wow. I was really impressed. So I sort of like try to send him little messages too that I would love to, you know. He loves to work with women and he always writes them great songs. And yeah. the always Sheena Easton, he did He should have given you sugar walls. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm a little, no, 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 no. Not age appropriate, dear. Uh, I, was, I was talking to him. <laughs> I was... I was talking in the monologue. Although my about... gynecologist did tell me I had the had the I, I had the insides of a 22-year-old. He did tell me that. He did tell me that. He, he did tell me that. He did. He did. I did this very private business, but I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was really wonderful because I'm trying to have another baby, you know, and I'm not a spring chicken. <laughs> but uh, see, I read in the um, I've been reading up on uh, older women having babies, and I already had one child, but I'd like to have another one. So I went, and he told me that, and I thought, wow, let's get to it. Husband. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. No, that's all right. I'm just telling you my private, my okay. private business. Um, in the monologue, I was looking for Lionel Richie in the Waldo uh, photo. And when you look in crowds, you find the most interesting things. Sandy, blow this up. Let them see. Look. 
look in this. There's you and Latoya holding hands. <laughs> You're so mean to her. Where's Ben? She, I had red hair. I have to see this hairdo. <laughs> My goodness me. And I was chubby. <laughs> But I was into it. I was into it. You know, Bruce Springsteen was standing next to me, and they moved him. What? And they moved him into the middle so he could be with all the really hot people, the people who were selling records that year. I was like, I, I don't know why they invited me. I mean, I was touched and everything, but I was definitely on the, in, on the wrong side of the... Well, I was standing next to LaToya, you know. <laughs> She was very nice to me, and I don't really dish. I don't like to dump on other performers. She hardly ever performs, right? It won't. I mean, I don't really know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't like to dump. You must. I, I like her. I mean, I like her. I don't like to be mean to people. I really don't. I mean, I used to when I was younger. I was bitter and so I was, what was I so bitter about it so mean to everybody were you bitter when I you was were bitter and I was so I don't know I guess I, I wanted it immediately I, I was you know really selfish I, as a child of my generation I wanted it all now and I you know you get a you know have some life experience and you realize you can't you you know you meet them on the way up you meet them on the way down <laughs> now when you talk about I'll be there soon Latoya <laughs> When you talk about a period when you were mean, now, you're talking about oh, the bathhouse so period? You're no, well, you know, I think a lot of, yeah, I was very mean in those days. I think, I mean, I was, I had a reputation as having a really foul mouth, and, and, and I, I guess I did push a lot of people, I still have that <laughs> reputation, you don't know how to tell me, right? Um, um, I think of myself as a real goody two-shoes, and everyone else thinks like I'm this, this uh, real hellraiser. Anyway, yeah, I was mean, and I should, and in, in retrospect, I shouldn't have been quite so mean, I, I, it, because it didn't, it wasn't, it doesn't serve any purpose. You know, you see all this, it, 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 I should, this is not the thing to say on a festive occasion like this, but people do, in our country, over the last few years, we've really gotten very, very down. I mean, we, you know, we're always looking at people's, you know, laundry. And it didn't used to be that way, you know. And now we do it so much more than we ever did. It's kind of, yeah. I don't think all of life should be that. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> you know, I was wondering, I have a very young demographic. How many know what bathhouses were? Thank you. Maybe your demographic isn't so young, babe. <laughs> well, half clapped and half didn't. Uh, yeah. Because I'll be honest with you. I asked somebody today, I said, I always hear about Beth starting in the bathhouses. Mm -hmm. What are those? Well, uh... <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> I've been answering this question for 20 years. But I've only been in the business I... three. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in the uh, uh, late 60s, in the, uh, in the late 60s, I think it was, uh, in New York, there was this phenomenon of a health club. It was, and it was a gay health club. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, uh, there were a number of them. They were a combination gym, gymnasiums and swimming pools and saunas and all that sort of thing. And then they had little rooms in the back where there was a tremendous amount of socializing, which I actually never saw or participated in. But this one guy, I'm being, I'm being euphemistic here, mm -hmm. the, the one, this one guy had this great idea that he would have entertainment at his spa because he thought uh, they were w worthy of it or something like that. And so he, uh, he sent someone out to find entertainers and I was working at Bud Friedman's place, the improv in those days, and Bud was my manager. And uh, this g job paid $300 for two nights, and this was the most money I had ever earned in my life up till that time. And I said, oh, absolutely. And when I came down the steps, I'll never forget as long as I live, came down the steps, it was a big open space with a floor very much like this, with a crowd very much like this. No. Uh, no, no, no. Um, uh, it was a, uh, they, they, it was all men, all male, and they were all naked except that they were all wearing towels around their uh, genitals. And I don't know, you know, I, tell, I used to tell this story to people, and people used to think, what was that like? But you know, to me, it was just normal. To me, it was like, you know, it was like, it was a job. It was just what you did. You didn't think twice about it, you know? Yeah. And I went out, and they were, uh, Barry, was it Barry? Was Barry the first? Did I work with Barry the first time? I think I did work. The first time I worked was with Barry Manilow. And uh, he didn't have much 
we had these rehearsals that were very kind of grim and he didn't really know what it was that I did and when I came out of the uh, my dressing room sort of in drag you know, he, he just went like, you know, and he had the best time of his life. And I had the best time of his, my life, too. And these guys just sort of made a star out of me after that. They, they loved me. I was hilariously funny. They made me be funny when I hadn't been funny before. I had just, I'd been a torch singer. Yeah. And I, I wanted to be a torch singer or a blues singer or a soul singer. This was like the end of that whole era. Yeah. And uh, he made me be funny. They, those guys made me be funny. And I turned into what I am today. Look at the success. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've only been talking to people on this couch for three years. Now, I never knew what entertaining at a bathhouse was. People in towels. People in towels, yes, they were quite naked. And I never actually saw... <laughs> I never actually saw a penis. <laughs> Although I was looking very hard. <laughs> they, were very, they were very kind to me. They never let me see anything. They, you know, whatever they did, they did on their own. And I think they knew I was kind of a baby at the whole thing. I was very, you know, naive. But I had a ball. I sang some awful songs. I t told some terrible jokes. I mean, sorry. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I really did have a lot of fun. You, you talked about blues. Um, Linda Hopkins, who is a blues gospel yes, singer. She, yes, she. I met her in the uh, in the late '60s. She was in Pearly Victorious, and my best friend was the hairdresser on that show. And she used to drag me up to Harlem to hear that to hear her sing in her choir. Yeah. And I fell in love with gospel music, and I went to see everybody. Rhythm and blues too was a very big part of my life in those days. I used to go see. Uh, I went to Queens. I sat on the floor to see Ike and Tina Turner when they were together with the Ikeettes, and I saw. I used to see. Uh, you love Aretha. Oh, I loved. I worshipped Aretha. Oh, she gave me the stink eye one time. Oh, it was so awful well, I loved her well, so I'm much sorry. oh I mean I was I worshipped Aretha Franklin I mean she, I worshipped her I was on her label I was on Atlantic and I I remain the oldest living artist on Atlantic I swear to God I've been there 20 years and all, it's all her fault <laughs> I swear because I loved her so much and I went to see her one night I slept out to uh, Cherry Cherry Hill in uh, Philly Jersey, Ch Jersey yeah, yeah right to see her and and I guess she I don't know. She thought I was a, jer a joke or a jerk or a, <laughs> some old fay or something like that. And she was kind of chilly to me, and I sobbed all the way home. However, I'm still on that label, and she's gone, so. <laughs> oh, I loved her. I still love her. I loved yeah. her. I went out to the uh, uh, Hyatt house to see Bobby Blue Bland. That was a real eye-opener. Have you ever seen Bobby Blue Bland? No, Have you ever I've seen him work the room? He is amazing. He's, he's a blues singer. He's a blues singer. He's a great blues singer, but he's also a kind of just a rhythm blues singer, not not blues, you know, yeah. that kind of blues. But uh, later, and he stands and gets and women come to him and put money in his pockets. I said, I got to figure out how this guy is doing that. <laughs> this is a, this would be great in an act, really. Yes, it would. They love him so much. They love him so much. I have to maybe. Go yeah, see go him see work. Bobby Blue Bland. Maybe it's that thing. I've heard him sing. He does it. Yeah, he, yeah, he does. Yeah, he maybe does. Maybe that's it. Maybe I, <laughs> after every joke, I have to say, yeah. You know, and there's a, ooh, a dollar. Uh, uh, okay, you're going to do another song. I and will. Uh, when you all leave here. <laughs> When you all leave here, go check out the movie because it's getting real good reviews and uh, I'm going to go check it out myself Thank tonight. Thank uh, We'll be right back with Bette Midler. Hey, which do you think tastes more? I mean, every road leads back to you from the movie For the Boys. This is Bette Midler. <laughs> It feels so good to see you looking back in time There have been other friends and other lovers But no other one like you
Christmas time. And it certainly has been a, an interesting year, a hell of a year. I'd like to sing the song that I started my year out with, a song that lots of people liked, but mostly the people who uh, fought in the, the Gulf War. From a distance, the world is blue and green, and the snow-capped mountains white. From a distance, the ocean meets the stream, and the Stay. 